Hi everyone, welcome to Unit 2. For Unit 2, you're going to be reading chapters 7, 8, 9, and 20. I've posted the lecture notes, lecture notes with slides, and the narrated slides for all of these, uh, all of the chapters. You're also going to have for Unit 2, with respective due dates, the due dates might be different in the course you're at, but for the respective due dates, you're going to have the graded assignment and core assessment, department test, discussion board, and test number two. Let's go through the department test first. This is not a te proctored test, and let's preview the test. There's no time limit on it, and you'll have ten questions. The questions on the test are going to be focused on everything that we've covered up to this point. So you're going to have questions on economics. You're going to have basically questions focused on the study of economics and resource allocation. So that is one thing that you'll take. It's worth up to five points and it will be added to your lowest test grade so that will assist with your effort in the course. Then you have the graded assignment and core assessment. This is where you're going to be submitting this assignment in the Dropbox for grading. What you're looking at is a production possibility frontier that's producing automobiles and forklifts. That's all they produce. Now, if the economy's at point C, so we're right here at point C, what is the cost of one more automobile? So what you want to do is to find the cost of an automobile, you want to take car, forklifts over automobiles. Find the ratio. You're looking at the slope of finding the production possibility frontier. That's what you're looking at. And then what is it for a forklift? To find it for a forklift, you do automobiles over forklift. So whatever you're looking for goes on the bottom of the ratio. So that's very important to look at. So you will submit that in your box, in the drop box, and I will grade that for you. If you need any help, let me know. For the Unit 2 Discussion Board, you're going to look at why are prices flexible? Why is that important prices are flexible? And what are the implications that the government has to get involved in pricing decisions? So you want to focus on at least a good develop uh, response that includes an APA formatted in-text citation reference and support for your effort. If you'd like me to pre-grade your work, please let me know. I'd, I'd be more than willing to. Now let's go over some of the concepts in Chapter 7. Chapter 7 is going to be looking at GDP. GDP is focused on the gross domestic product, and it's looking at what's being produced in our economy. And you'll notice, just like a household, individuals have to make decisions on what's being produced. In terms of measuring GDP, GDP is made up of four components. Consumers, businesses, government, and net exports. So the key that you want to look at with this section is the role of GDP. So when we look at <clears throat> the role of GDP, you want to look at the four components and why those four components are important and how we can evaluate those four components. The largest of the four components is consumers, consumption. They make up about 70% of our economy. Then we want to focus on nominal versus real GDP. <clears throat> nominal GDP is looking at current price and current output, <clears throat> whereas real GDP is looking at current output times a fixed price. So when you look at real GDP, it's adjusting for inflation, which is important to evaluate. So real GDP is focused on constant price to a base year, where, real, where nominal GDP is looking at current price and current output levels. So nominal versus real GDP is a very important distinction. You'll notice that countries will take more time evaluating real GDP because real GDP is going to take out of the equation inflation. 
which is something that's very important to evaluate. So those are two of the mo most important concepts in Chapter 7 that you want to focus on. Now let's look at Chapter 8. In Chapter 8, we're going to be looking at the role of economic growth. Economic growth is looking at how is real GDP expanding. When real GDP is expanding, our economy is producing more stuff. And when our economy is producing more stuff, economic growth is occurring. <clears throat> now, there's two possible reasons for economic growth. Economic growth can occur because more is being produced in our economy. Also, economic growth can occur when there's a higher standard of living. A higher standard of living will lead to more increase in terms of what individuals are spending. And when more individuals have more to spend, this is very helpful for economy. These citizens can use this money to stimulate spending in our economy. Now, ways that will promote economic growth. These are very important to look at. Strong property rights, protection of ideas and brands, efficient financial institutions, uh, education, and free trade. All of those will lead to and promote modern economic growth, which is very important to evaluate. Now, some of the determinants of economic growth are looking at natural resources and human resources. When you look at natural resources, you'll notice that these are big factors in our economy. And what we look at with natural resources are things that the economy can produce. And when we look at these natural resources, there's many protections we want to look at. When you, an economy will be able to take advantage of these natural resources that other economies are not able to take advantage of, given their land and their environment. Then we look at physical and capital goods, or physical and human capital. Those are important to evaluate as well. So those are some of the concepts in Chapter 8. Now with Chapter 20, we want to focus on some different factors in this section. And we want to focus on the role of international trade. And you'll notice in the U.S. we have a very large trade deficit. A trade deficit is where there are more, where exports are much less than imports. And the challenge we're facing with regard to this trade deficit is how to evaluate how to deal with our largest trading partner which is Canada. And the big trading deficit that we have with is China. And that's a very tough evaluation because we have to understand how do we deal with these implications of these standards. And these standards are based off of how we understand how we limit ex importing and expand our exporting. Some of the key things <clears throat> that we import are automobiles, oil or gas, metals, appliances, and computers. Some of our main imports into the U.S. Now, if you look at the U.S., you know China has the largest share of world exports, which is very important. Now, followed by Germany and the United States. And you look at it, the largest share in terms of the world, that is a, that's an implication that the government tries to focus on of China because China's an export-led growth. Export-led growth is a more opportunities to stimulate the demand of an economy through creating jobs and producing things in their economy so they can ship out. So these are some of the concepts that we're going to focus on this week. If you have any questions please let me know but make sure to focus on the due dates as no late works accepted in the course.